again. So today we will talk about the part three, which is the last part, hopefully, of this series. Let me open my my pen. Okay, so this is part three. Actually, I didn't expect it to be this long, but it's okay. It's worth it to talk a lot about the uh, Arduino networking or the Modbus networks. It's it's really full of information and full of a lot of things that we can learn of this series. So it's okay. Although it's been three parts, I, I, I expect that the first time when I record the video, I expect only to make one video, but it's happened to be three. But it's okay. We learn a lot through this series. So I hope you also guys learn a lot from this series, same as me. Okay. So in the first tutorial, or in the part one, let's say, we learn how to construct the network, <clears throat> okay, and how to broadcast the data. Our network con consists of one base station and three devices. Okay, then we learn how to broadcast the data from the base station all the way to nodes. So today and in this part of the tutorial, let me change to say green. In this tutorial, oh no, sorry, let's talk about tutorial part two. In part two, we add something called addressing scheme where we give addresses to all the nodes master or the base station was number zero device one was one two two and the third one is the device three okay then uh, the part two also we learn how to specify the requests to each individual node for example the master or the base station can specifically talk to each one of the devices or the nodes without broadcasting the data. Okay. So this is in part two. So today and in part three, which is the last, uh, let me choose this one. So in this part, we will learn not only request data, because all the previous parts, we request data. Now we will send data to control the built-in LED. If you remember, there is a built-in LED here. I'll just throw as a diode. Okay, there's a built-in LED here at each node so the master will request now will request the data from the sensor node plus control the led okay same data and request data sorry and control at the same time same to the all nodes will request and control okay so if we go further to the Okay, let's see to here. If you remember, this is our uh, node constructions or nodes construction. This is only two nodes, but actually we have more than two. We have four of one base station and two. Uh, these uh, nodes. So this time we will control this LED. If you see here, there's LEDs here. So the base station will send data, or so it will send requests to the node to grab whatever data inside the node plus control this LED. Okay, so I guess enough talking about this. We are ready now to get our hands dirty with coding and do the the examples and we'll see and learn how to make it works. Okay, so let's do it.
Okay, so now we reached the last part of our tutorial where we will send or we construct the request string using the serial. Okay, so the serial will ask us to uh, will ask us some questions to construct the request based on the answers. Okay, so let's do it. So first of all, I'll start with the base station core. Here it is in front of us. So I will start to add some extra code. So the Syria will construct the request string. Okay, so first of all, we need a string also. Let's copy this, make it faster. So we need string temperature. And if you remember this one, you just delete this and we don't need it anymore. Because the destination address or all the information will be key in, in the serial. The current is fixed is zero because it's a base station. This is temperature, not all. Uh, what else do we need? Uh, humidity. And what else? Light for sure. And also, we will add on a new variable or new uh, section in our string and in our dictionary to control the built-in LED in the nodes. So for that, I will add new string called LED. Okay. Mm. Okay. So now we can directly go to to the next function or the setup function. This from the setup function, if you remember before that or the early in this tutorial, we add this code to send the string or construct the dictionary. Then we send the string once whenever we hit a reset. So this time we make it auto I mean auto generated using the serial so you need to comment all this thing uh, yeah this thing all we don't need it so far this one need for setup this one we just comment it all okay but we need to add most of our code or the new code will be added in the loop Okay, because the loop will continuously maintain the serial of what we are inputting to construct the uh, uh, string. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if it's available, mm, this one we don't need it for time being, just keep it down below. If available, we, we will need a string. Let's call it serial equal to serial dot read string until the until what the new line so it means we call we, we will read the complete uh, string Okay, so far. So now we will check. Now we need to check if if the serial that we read or the string is equal to S capital S. This is just I mean just a little I choose. So when I enter capital S. The code will detect this. Uh, okay, the user need to start new string to be constructed. Okay, so if s open if s mm, here we need to start to display some information for the user. Mm, so we need serial dot print line here we will ask the user to enter the this 
destination not number hmm, forgot the double quotation So will be for one, two, three. So enter one. For node number one. Uh, I just leave this one and put it back again. Easier, faster. So it's two and three. So enter two. For two. Enter three for three, etc. Okay, that should be it. And now let's check. Is it okay? Hmm, I haven't connect my connect my uh, base station. Okay, let's connect it back. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so it's done it means our work is okay. So now we need to continue. So after we ask the user to enter something, we need to go into nested while loop. So while while one or while true, we need to check. If serial available if the serial is available then we need to open brackets nice okay so if the serial available then we need to read the string again to wait the input from the user okay and after it's input anything then we will set this remember this is what this is the destination so we need to copy the destination destination address equal to serial string exactly like this okay So we finish from the node. Now we will add <coughs> or check. So now we finish with the node. Let's add some comments. So S, then we select the destination node. Now We need to uh, set the temperature request. Whether we need the temperature or no, if you remember, it will be question mark or zero. Question mark will be requested, zero, no need. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how to do that so we need to again bring something to the user to ask them to respond so we say enter question mark if you need the temperature readings or you may enter zero if not or you don't want okay so you may choose one if you want the request readings is zero if not uh, enter the question mark if not you just enter zero okay again we need while loop while one after while one again we need to check if it is a 
okay if it's available what we will do we need to read again to see what the user has inputs okay so after they read again so now we will assign whatever we got from the user through the serial to the temperature so now we can say temperature equal to serial compile okay so we finish now with the With the set the temperature, so now we set the humidity. And go down. So now we set the humidity request. H U M. For sure, this is not the good way or the perfect way to do it, but it's just for you guys to learn. Okay. So now, if I want to check the humidity which is the same again just copy this enter a question mark if you need the humidity readings or zero if you don't again we need to go through a while loop while one then we check if it's available then we read it exactly the same but this time since we are reading the humidity then we need to call the humidity 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 so the humidity will be here humidity equal to serial string that's all okay so now we come to lights. Light. Okay, again. Same. We will see the user if we want to enter Gosima, if we need the light reading, light intensity for sure. Mm. Then after that for sure we need while loop wait for the user to input something then again check whether the serial is available then we need to read this now we need to call the lights light to be taking the serial readings nice let's compile see we didn't do anything mm -hmm. oh yeah for sure need assignments okay so this is for the light nice so now we come to the LED do you remember the new thing we have at all So now the LED request is this is not request the LED on we need to enter one or zero for off okay so again we send this as the user enter one if you need to on the LED or zero to off it. Okay. Again, we need while loop here. So after the while loop, we check and take the serial string. This time we call the last variable, last string is the LED. So the LED equal to Syria. <clears throat> okay, that's last. So now we need to construct our 
what they call our dictionary, which is this. So now we need to copy from here and to here. Okay, we copy this. We just put it inside this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Command. Okay, so now we construct this again. See all this follow the one, but now if you remember, we manually set it. Now we will set it with the variable we have. For example, light. We'll take the L. And then we have here humidity from Hume, and also the temperature. We go to the ten. Destination for sure. We'll go to destination and uh, Canada. This is a standard this is zero for base station. But if you remember, we have a new one LED, new, new one uh, LED, LED. So this one, which key? So let's just choose D, uh, and this one will be LED value LED. Okay. This dictionary will be the same. This one need to add on more for sure. This is will be LED, and this one will be D. Okay, and for sure after that we need to convert the string into uh, sorry the what they call the dictionary into string. I maintain the same. Then we send it out. And for sure print it for us to double check or confirm. And if you check here we have a lot of while one while on this one our code will be stuck here in this nested while one so we need to break it after we finish so after the while loop which is somewhere here okay here we need to break it so we need break here and also Yeah, after this, where is the while loop with the second one? Ah, this one also need to break it after the second, which is, yeah, exactly here we need to break it. Otherwise we'll be stuck. This one will be while. I ah, know. So if while. So this is will be our. Mm -hmm. This is the light while loop. Again, we need break. Here. And here should be another one. Yeah, for temperature. So this is the while loop for the temperature. So we need break here. Okay. So here I believe this is the first while loop for the temperature. Yeah, so it should be here. It will be another break. Okay, so let's see how many while loops we have. We have one, two, three, four, five. Exactly, we have five while loops, and we have one, two, three, four, five, five breaks. Beautiful. Okay, let's test it out. I believe it should be it. Okay, let's upload. Make sure is oh, not selected. Com7, Arduino Uno, Com7. Yes, this is my base station. Again, make sure is this one zero zero. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. It's uploading and done. Let's check it out. 
So for sure, so you just base station is ready. And if you remember, our first condition need to enter S actually. See, if you want need to enter S. So let's enter S capital. Here we go. Enter the destination number node. Which node you want to talk to? For example, for sure, I, I, I have been connected to the rest of the network yet, but just for testing. Let's say I want network, uh, node number one. Then it will ask you, enter question mark if you want a temperature or zero if you don't want. Yes, I want question mark. Then ask you for humidity. Humidity, for example, I don't want zero. Then ask you for the light. Okay, I like the light. Question mark. Then ask you about the LED. Yes, turn on the LED. One, enter. So now I should construct the dictionary. Okay. The can address zero because it is a base station. Destination I want to send to node number one. Temperature, yes, I need the temperature, I need the light, I don't want the humidity, and the LED should be on. And here we go. This is our string, should be sent to the network. But here we got no response because the node's not ready yet. So let's go to the node code and develop the code to respond to this message. Okay, let's move. Okay, so here <clears throat> is our node code. So now we need to update our node code to to tackle the LED that we add on. Okay. So all the rest will be the same. This is node number one. Let me turn on. Okay, I connect on the node. So all will be the same. The thing need to add on is the built-in LED. Let's add it here. So pin mode. This one will be the LED built-in. Will be output. <coughs> the rest should be the same. Oh, here I need to change to what they call LED with D. Okay. Uh, and here, if this is for the current existing node, need to do all these things and add on, we need to turn on the LED. How to turn on the LED? We use the digital right. Digital right word, the built-in LED, where's the built-in LED? Now we need to turn on or off the built-in LED according to the data coming from here. Okay. So we need to put this one here. So following the value of this key, we need to turn on and off. But if you remember, if you remember, the values always string. We need to convert this into, yes, to integer. But this one in space to integer, boom, 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 like this, okay? The rest should be the same. Yeah, that's all. So now we are ready to upload and test. So. Our, uh, this is one, one, all ones, this is correct. So this, this one should be node number one, okay. We are ready to hit upload. Okay, it's compiling now. Uh, hopefully the compiler will be happy with this. So after finish, we may do some tests with node number one, since I'm excited to test it out. Okay, almost there. So let me check, open the base station again. Uh, Okay, this is the base station code. Uh, let me open this for the base station. 
or let me bring this one here and this one here so node number one is ready and base station also ready so now let's do some testing with node number one node number one is is already updated with the led code so i will do some tests so capital s now we expect to ask it something okay one number one node number one yes i want the temperature humidity yes light yes and turn on the led yes i want one send so here's the construction should something here here we go send the reply reply received and here we go and voila i can see that the led is on on the node number one. Oh, okay Need to set up my camera on the page to show you so looks like okay so now i will put this aside first need to do the rest of the the rest of the notes uh, so this is node number one now we need to do uh sorry node number one go to two ah that's okay no problem so this one should be two should be two 22.2 two, 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 two. upload again okay okay guys so I already uh, finish with node number two so I move it to node number one and let's change the code now should be one one point one 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 okay come for correct and let's hit upload okay compiler happy is uploading Node number one, almost done. <clears throat> now we need to move to node number three after that. Okay, done. Node number three. Here we go. Boom. This is node number three. Current address three. 33.3. 333333. Upload. <clears throat> okay. So let's wait for it to be done. Okay. Okay, so let's do some testing. Go to base station again. Open this guy. And open this. Okay, so put this aside. Let's test out for the last time. Let's say, okay, we want to construct new string to node number three. And no, I don't want the temperature. I want humidity and I don't want the light. And turn on the LED. Let's see, it should construct, send to here. Here we go, send the reply. Let me check out, voila. The LED is on. So now I will set up the camera on the bench and show you exactly how it looks like on the breadboard and how the LED is on and off based on our instructions. For so now we are not only requesting data, but we're sending data to the node itself. Okay. So let's move on. Okay, guys, so we can see here, uh, these are all the nodes, base station, node number one, number two, and node number three is already connected. And we can see here, these are the LEDs are already off. So now we will try to open the base station and we construct our string. 
base station is ready. Again, we send S first. Let's talk to, let's say, node number three. Three. Do you want the temperature? Yes. How about the humidity? No. Light readings, I don't want, but turn on the LED, yes, one, enter. So now we should see, send the request to node number three. Here we go. And if you see now, here we go. Node number three LED is on. Let's send another request to, let's say, node number one. Uh, do you want the temperature? Yes. Humidity? Yes. I want all the data. And at the same time, turn on the LED. Yes. For node number one. Here we go. We should see the LED. Voila. It's on already. Okay. So now let's turn off LED number three for node number three. Again, we send another request. Node number three. And I don't want any data from node number three. But turn off the LED. We should see node number three off. Okay, so with this, <coughs> we have reached to the end of our tutorial. So we have learned how to address the wireless sensor network. And also we have learned how to send a specific data to a specific nodes. And also we have learned how to request a specific data from the specific nodes. And at the same time, we send data to that node, not only request, but we send data as well. So I hope you have learned something and see you in the next tutorial. Well, here we are. We have reached to the end of part three, which is the end of this tutorial or this series. Actually, it's, it's become a series already. Although I was target to make only one short video for this topic, but it looks like it's kind of uh, took me too long to finish it. One well, also it's full of information and a lot of things to do. It's okay. We have fun all these with all these videos and we learn a lot. Okay, so for sure this series, I don't think it's going to end here, but at least up to this part until we can see what to do in the future. Okay, so now we just want to recap. Again, let me bring my pen as usual. So let's recap what we have done in the previous parts and up to date. So in part one, in part one, if you still remember, guys, for sure, I really encourage you, if you have been go through the, all the parts, I really encourage you to go through the first, second, until three, because they are linked to each other, and you can see the, 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 the learning curve there. Yeah, the learning curve is very important. You can see what we have done first, second, and third, and even there are, I believe, one or two, all tutorials I done it for RS network also I'm not sure I guess only one or two yeah that one also is very basic and like point to point network is very basic one I really encourage you to go through that one first then you come to this series okay so <clears throat> for the part one what we have learned for the part one first we constructed the multi hub network using the RS485 uh, module. Okay, we construct uh, a network of base station and three nodes, node one, node two, and node three. Okay, this is one, two, and three. Then we learn how to broadcast the data among the networks. We learn how to send data from base station to the networks, uh, to the other nodes. Okay, this all in part one. Then we move out to part two. In part two, we have developed what we have learned in part one and in further improve it by 
using or introducing an addressing scheme. If you remember in part one, we just broadcast the data. Okay, it means just send the data and all the nodes will be receiving the requests and all of them will be responding if they need to. But in part two, no, we develop the addressing scheme. Okay, this ad addressing scheme is specifying an address for each node. Okay, so for example, this station we give it zero. For node number one, one, node number two will be two, number three, three, and even if you have more, you can add more. Okay, then we learned also at part two how we can specifically send a request from the base station only for node number one, only. Although all the nodes will be receiving the same request, but since the base station want to talk to node number one, so the rest will be ignoring the, the request because it's not for them. Okay, this is we, we did it in part two, okay. In part three, also we further improve it. If you remember again in part two, in part two, all the addressing and uh, what we call it back then, the request string, okay? The request string was constructed in the base station it was hard coded. Mm -hmm. The request string was hard coded inside the base station. And if you remember, whenever if you want to change, for example, now we send to number one, to node number one. If you want to request from node number two, we need to re upload the code again to the base station. We change the parameter, need to re upload again. Then if you want two, three again, we need to re upload again. This was in part number two. In part number three, we use the UI art. This interface very strong and very useful and powerful. We use the UI art uh, monitor to construct, help us to construct the addressing string. Okay, so we no need to keep uploading new sketch to the base station. It's only one sketch, but it can change the string according to our inputs in the UI art monitor. Okay. This one also very big improvements. So we not depend like if you want to change the string, then you need to upload again your code. So this one, it's helped us a lot. Then not only we haven't only stopped there, but we go beyond that. We not only send a request if you remember up to yeah up to part two we only send a request for example base station want to know either the temperature humidity or light intensity from each of these nodes okay so base station request okay i want the if i want request the temperature i'll send question mark if i don't want request the parameter i'll send zero if i want the light i'll send question mark okay if you remember this string was containing these parameters this one only requests the data but we never send it or never include data into our addressing scheme or addressing string so in part three we learn how to do so we added data not only we request the temperature or humidity from this that node but we send the data to the node whereby we use it to use the data to control the LED. It just for example. This data, we send another byte, we call it D. This D will, will hold either one or zero. Okay, for sure you can send different data if you want. For example, instead one or zero, because this one I will use it to turn on or control the LED at the node. 
But you, instead of this, you can send any data or you can send any other information to the nodes, not request. This is data from the base station to node. Okay, is not because if you request, is mean the nodes will feed back or reply the data to the base station. But when you send data, you forwarding data from base station all the way to the nodes. This is what we use for the LED. Okay, and also we have seen how powerful and strong our dressing scheme, where it's helped us to filter out all the information that coming from different nodes or even the nodes themselves they know which data been belong to them and which one is not and able to reply them correctly okay so we have learned all this so far very happy with the outcomes up to here so let's move forward Okay, future work. So for sure, as we said just now, we won't stop up to here, but we have a future works to do. Maybe you guys, you can try to do it if you can, and we can share our code, we can share our knowledge to see how to do this. This one is just my future plan, uh, but I haven't have a clear idea how to do it, but this is what we can do. First of all, we can add a timeout. If you remember, until now, all our requests, if the request is not being answered for any reason, okay, if you go back, if let's say the base station send requests to any of these nodes, and for some reason, for example, node 1 is powered down, or maybe send requests for some node that not exist in the network, let's say number 10. The base station will keep waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay, will be waiting forever. So why not we add a timeout, timer, okay, to time out our requests. For example, we send a request, then we wait, let's say for a few seconds, maybe five seconds. If there is no response, then we can declare, okay, it's a timeout. So either the node is down or the node does not exist in the network. Okay, this one is the first thing we can do. And I believe this is not that hard to add a timeout to our current address scheme. Again, the th and the second thing is to auto assigning the addresses to the network again okay no need to go back let's just draw again so if you remember we have base station node 1 node 2 and node 3 3 2 1 and base station if you remember the base station we add 0 and this one we use the same address if you remember all these addresses we hard coded inside the MCU itself okay for example if we have new node let's say this is new node it doesn't have any address it won't be automatically joined the network you need to manually assign this node number four and for example or you can imagine let's say if you have very big fat network few hundreds of nodes you can even uh, track work what is my last node to increase the address by one for the next node. Okay, that's make no sense. So we can do some auto addressing scheme assignments. Okay, by maybe the base station will have some table. Okay. This one, again, just like my imagination, I'm not sure if we can do, but for sure we can. We can say, let's say the current node, okay, and the loss, maybe the loss communication, okay, so the current node, then the base station can scan through the network, then maybe the network, if we assume, let's say this is all new, 
the network for somehow take turn to reply when the first one will reply will say okay you will be number one then it will drop down there number one then again the second one reply then we'll send back okay you number two we we'll draw down there number two all the way fill up the table the addressing table for example and then when throughout the work of the network then it's found oh okay there's a timeout on let's say network two so it will take out network two from the current network to loss okay so when let's say in the future we add new network or sorry we add new node the base station it knows that number two is empty can assign to the new uh, node something like this okay the third thing is to move the data between multiple networks so far all the data being moved from and to the same network let's say we have base station and we move through this network these all consider as one network okay how if we have another network this is another base station this is not number one number two all the way number n okay let's say this this network is start with 100 this is 101 102 1 and n okay and for sure this base station might has a link they might has a link together okay so how for example if this base station want to go all the way to this at the other network okay or maybe this node want to talk to this node okay for sure if this one for example it will request from 101 but for sure 101 won't be here so we have to find some way to do or to add something called can I enjoy down then transition table transition table will be in each base station so it will record what is the network address okay for example this one start with zero one two three etc this is on one network network address let's say one network address two will be another column or another uh, yeah another column so when the node let's say want to go from network one to network two it knows that need to go to the the second base station to reach to that one so this base station when it see there is a request out of the range of this network it's known that it shouldn't be only broadcasted on here but need to forward to the <coughs> to the other network so again this is future work hopefully i will find the time to implement these challenges yeah excited to implement this also we can do too many things with this uh with this uh multi networks not only multi hope but multi networks so we can jump from one network to another or either or even we can add on let's say different networks with different technologies for example this one we use the rs maybe we have another another network using the bluetooth or maybe wi-fi etc this one we jump from different networks with different technologies this all we will talk about it by using a hybrid we what we call hybrid base station hybrid base station will has two two interface rs bluetooth rs to talk to the rs bluetooth to talk to the bluetooth networks this i mean this one we talk about it and when we design the when we design the solution in the future.
Okay, so up to now, I hope you have learned a lot from this tutorial. Me also, I have learned a lot. We fixed too many challenges. Uh, happy learning, everyone. Please let me know if you need any support or any help. I believe everything is clear throughout this series. And yeah, thanks so much for watching and supporting. And see you soon in the next series or next tutorial. We don't know what will be next. Okay, happy learning. Bye.